Okay, ladies and gentle dudes, I'll be going live on the radio in a few minutes. It's still a little cold here in Japan, so I'm all bundled up. But once I get into the radio show, I'll uh, probably take off some layers because I always get hot. So right now I'm talking to Lucy Diamond on on uh, Skype, and she's going to call me. And uh, this is where you guys go. This link, where did it go? Here, listen now. Jim, Jim Jin Radio. Click this button. Supposedly this is live, but I don't know. I keep hearing the same commercials. Put the science behind the power of positive thinking in your hands. Order this truly positive thinking. So I'm live on Jim Jim Jin Radio. And while you're there, check out the reader's blog. That's www.ordainingreality.com. What's good? This is G.O.D. Here to congratulate all of this year's prom princesses and prom princes. Let me remind you once, there's nothing cool about being kept alive by machines when you're stupid. Don't drink and drive, period. Ever. Keeping it real with you, rocking on. From all of us at Jim Jim, keep your family and your crew safe. I hope my battery doesn't wear out. I, I can't find my plug. <coughs> okay, we're ready to go. Stand by. Ten minutes and counting. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Tim. How are you? Great. Let me pause the radio show here. Okay. Everything is good. Good, good. Now, are you calling in from... Uh... Actually, where are you calling? You're calling in from Japan? <laughs> Japan, yeah. Okay, very good. Now, what, what part of Japan? Uh, the back side of Japan. Uh, some people in the front side call it the butt side of Japan. It's. Now, that, was that anywhere near where the, uh, where the uh, tsunami hit? No, that's the opposite side. So we're on the opposite side of the Japanese Alps. Okay, good, good. Uh, 
well, very good. And, uh, you know, uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of an idea on the show, okay, I start off with a bit of a monologue just kind of about the show. Okay. And then, um, and then I typically kind of morph it into a subject matter that is somewhat relevant to the, you know, to the guests. Uh, and then I introduce the guest. And that usually takes about, you know, 12, 13 minutes. And, uh, and then we've got, you know, an hour and 15 minutes from there where you, you are the guest on, obviously, and we're having a dialogue. Um, I didn't know if you had any particular uh, favorite questions that you would like to have asked. Or, no, I like um, to go by the seat of my pants. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I typically do that on the show. <laughs> and uh, now, the thing that was confusing to me as I looked up material, uh, on you, but hang on one second. Yes. And, uh, and that's probably, you know, obviously more relevant to what we typically cover in the show. But I'd be glad to, you know, uh, talk about your songs and certainly uh, maybe we can even possibly cue one up. Uh, you know, I haven't even talked to the studio about that. Uh, especially, if, especially if there's a song that's kind of relevant, you know, to that topic. Yes. Uh, now, so, so tell me just a little bit, Tim, because we only have a few minutes uh, before we go on about... Uh, you know the. I guess. The, I mean, are you are you familiar with say Reiki healing and just, you know what you do, anything like that? And it's so it, it's very similar, um, except we can do it from any distance. And most of my clients are in America, and I'm in Japan. I have very few p clients in Japan because I don't speak Japanese too well. Mm -hmm. So most of my clients so come. If I said to you, Us, if I said to you, Us tomodachi, you, you would probably know that, though, right? Uh, not really. <laughs> That's, that's hello, friend. Oh, Tomodachi. Okay, you said Tomodachi. Okay. I said, Imanaji Deska. That oh, that's not... What time is it? Yes, I got that one. Choto mate. Yeah, please wait a minute. Yeah. So if I say that, okay. But if I say, I won't say that. Okay. Anyway, and I uh, used to have uh, a couple of Japanese people who worked for me. We spoke uh, Japanese to each other. Oh, cool. And I learned a bit. I got about 500 word vocabulary, but you, know, you can kind of work it around. Yeah, I've been here 12 years. I'm learning, but it's it's uh, they speak in three different languages. One language is, is to superiors, and one language is to people below them, and then one language is to normal people. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I know. They have, like, like, oost is one thing, but then... Uh, if, you, uh, if you're talking to somebody on the phone that's uh, mushi, 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 you know, it's kind of a different different kind of a way of saying hello. Yeah. Like, yeah. Anyway, I do understand to some extent. Um, yeah, so uh, so just tell me a little bit about the the, um, the spiritual healing. So uh, what, I, what I, like, I like to do is take some callers. Of, I, just, I muscle test, and my muscle testing gives them any answer they want to know, and I work on different charts, and I have them all on my computer. So the charts can tell me exactly what is they need to work on right away, and I can do that with, within minutes. Okay, very good. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, how that works from a scientific standpoint okay. before I introduce you, and then, uh, and, then I'm going to, and then I'll introduce you. Cool. Uh, and if you don't have any particular questions that you wanted me to ask you, then we'll just go from there. We'll wing it. Yeah. So, I, uh, I like to so follow the energy. Yeah, you'll be on uh, the, um, you know, my monologue, so, you know, anything in particular you want to you know reference back to that's fine but I'll just be doing the you know I'll just be doing the talking and I'll I feel I feel you'll be perfect so I'll just send you energetic support. Okay, sounds sounds good. <laughs> Alright. Well I'm 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 gonna stay on but I just have to grab one thing before I uh, before the show starts. So okay. Old 
and then with the new, uh, which is uh, which is really a, a greater vibration, a finer vibration, a more powerful vibration of who you can be. And sometimes you can't even do that until you, you know, kind of eliminate, uh, you know, the status quo. And oftentimes the status quo is what's, what's holding you back. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where in this wide world uh, of internet radio you are tuning into the show tonight. And of course, the show you're tuning into is Ordain Your Reality with your host, Dr. Joe Donlan. And welcome to the to, to, welcome to tonight's show. And welcome uh, all you listeners, you faithful listeners, to uh, the shows in the past. And we're always picking up. Uh, new listeners, which is wonderful, and so I'd like to give uh, you new listeners a uh, somewhat of an appreciation for what the show is about, and then uh, let me just get right into that. <clears throat> well, again, the show is called Ordain Your Reality, and what do we mean by Ordain Your Reality? Well, the premise really of that is that we can demonstrably affect the outcome of future events by our attitude, by our positive thinking specifically, and certainly by intention. And there's some mechanics involved with that. Meditation usually comes into play, prayer can come into play, visualization can come into play, and a number of other, you know, uh, techniques, if you will. And I've written a number of books on this subject. And by the way, I have a deep background in physics and in metaphysics. And uh, a lot of the material that I've presented has been peer reviewed by other physics, physicists, other actually theoretical physicists as well as practical physicists. And so, um, and I've actually kind of gone <clears throat> maybe somewhat, some would call bleeding edge, but I would call it leading edge. And, uh, and some of the stuff that might have been bleeding edge is now really almost accepted uh, in the uh, seven or eight years or nine years of, um, you know, producing a number of different books. And really the premise we have here that we're talking about is that um, we're now seeing a confluence between physics and metaphysics. And really what do I mean by each of those? Well, most of you understand what physics is all about. It's really a discipline that understands and uh, tries to understand uh, essentially all the forces of nature. And essentially it is something that deals with the five senses, you know, sight, you know, sound, Touch, smell, taste, and Can you not talk so loud. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. I'm picking up another uh, That's a uh, noise. Yeah. One three. Sorry, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so sorry about that, folks. I'm fine. Sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't realize. Okay. Okay. So uh, at any rate, <laughs> sorry about that, folks. That's what happens on live radio. So at any rate, uh, you know what we what physics deals with is essentially explaining things that we can perceive with our five senses and what metaphysics explains is things that exist beyond our five senses. And a long time ago, um, three or 400 years ago, a scientist, well, let's go back about 2,500 years ago, scientists believed that both realms were real. In other words, it was a realm of the physical and a realm of the, you know, spiritual, if you will, or the metaphysical. And the Greeks actually coined that word. Uh, metaphysical. And <clears throat> later on, when science uh, really developed much more, especially right after the Renaissance with all the discoveries right up through Newton and after that, we scientists began to get the idea that 
we didn't need metaphysics. We really had it all understood. We could explain everything, and it was really pretty redundant. And by the way, it seemed to be uh, not something you can get your arms around, nothing you can really quantify. So therefore, it didn't really matter, and it really wasn't something that um, really should be taken seriously. Well, we'll come full cycle again. We're, in fact, we're, we're more strongly aligned between physics and metaphysics. And when we talk about metaphysics now, we enter into really some new territory. We enter into an explanation for things that we never could explain before within the laws of physics. And we're beginning to, you know, encroach upon some of them into almost like this, into the brain of this, the brain being B-R-A-N-E, you know, like membrane, not brain in our heads. Although it is the brain in our heads that actually is, the, is doing the interpretation. And uh, speaking of brains, we really have two hemispheres. One is our left hemisphere and one is our right hemisphere. And interestingly enough, physics, the discipline of Western physics, is very much in line with and very much uh, the modality of thinking is along the lines of the left hemisphere. And interestingly enough, uh, metaphysics is very much along the lines of, of uh, the right hemisphere. So without getting into a whole uh, explanation of brain anatomy and, and the different modalities of thinking, uh, together the two of them, how we think, uh, the right brain and left brain comes into play in all of the things we do. We have intuitions about things, but we also have a rational understanding about things. And so that's really what's happening uh, in this world of science right now. And in fact, there's a large group of scientists uh, made of an organization called SAN, which is Scientists Against Non-Duality. I'm a very active member in that uh, organization. I've delivered papers in that organization. And its, its principal role is to kind of marry, if you would, physics and metaphysics. And the importance to the listener for that is that now we have explanations for things we didn't have explanations for before, and specifically uh, explanations for things that we would consider paranormal. And one of the things that we never could explain before was the notion of being able to ordain reality, meaning to be able to think about something and have it tangibly affect the outcome of a future event. Now, there's been so many cases about this, there's been so many anecdotal cases about this, that people suspected it for millennia. Uh, and there's many, many books about this. But we really never had the ability to explain tangibly how it works. And now we are be it, going to be able to uh, we'll explain that more and more and more, and we're certainly getting closer and closer to a, a fundamental understanding. And along with ordaining reality, we really now opened up the door to many more things that are related, and many of them have to do with uh, uh, energy healing and, and being able to send out healing vibrations and healing energy, uh, by the way, instantaneously uh, connecting with, with others. And in fact, that's the topic of the show tonight, because our guest tonight, uh, who, by the way, is is, uh, is calling in from uh, Japan, and uh, and our guest tonight, by the way, is uh, uh, is uh, Tim uh, Janikos, and uh, Tim is uh, well, he's many things actually. He's a he, he's an award-winning uh, inspirational singer-songwriter. He's also a visionary, uh, and he's an author of both fiction and non-fiction books. And uh, more to the subject tonight, he's a um, certified energy healer. Uh, he's a, Tim's a Native American. He's a Buddhist, which is not too surprising to be in that particular um, uh, field, if you would, of energy healing. And um, so he's, as I mentioned, he's currently living and performing in uh, northern Japan. And um, he also has his own uh, show. He, uh, he hosts a twice a week live energy healing radio show. And that's called From, from Time Without Beginning. Uh, you know, you can call in, let him perform some real time magic on you through that show, but you're also going to be able to do that on tonight's show. And um, so, <laughs> as Tim would say, how does it get any better than that? So that's what we have for tonight's show. And, uh, and I'm very happy because. <laughs> You know, what we're able to do now is to take some of the things that we've learned in physics and metaphysics and and put them into practical terms to actually do healing and, and what is more important, really, than, right. uh, than good health. So, so Tim, sorry, and... Uh, yeah, so, so I don't, I'm getting some uh, noise on the line here, but uh, Tim, are you with us? Yes, I am. Good to have everyone well, here. Sound nice and clear. You're coming in from uh, from Japan. And what part of Japan? You in northern Japan? Yeah, the backside. Um, 
It's next to Sato Island, which is a famous place where they used to exile people in the Shogun era. Oh, yes. Wow. Well, hopefully, hopefully you won't be exiled. <laughs> <laughs> I call it my self-imposed exile. So. <laughs> That's a nice, nice part of the country. Um, but at any rate, uh, Tim, welcome again to the show. And I don't know if I left anything else, uh, anything of particular, uh, you know, pertinent information on you out of that, but you can certainly uh, add to that. And, um, and of course, obviously, uh, I mentioned that you were a certified energy healer, and we've talked about that. We've had a number of uh, different types of energy healers uh, on the show, and they're really variations of themes. But when you say you're an energy healer, and I know you're very familiar with Reiki and and probably also quantum healing and so forth and so on. Uh, can you define, you know, maybe your, uh, <clears throat> I guess, you know, uh, aspect, if you would, of, uh, of energy healing, Tim? Yes. So the, the certification I have is called the Emotion Code. And the Emotion Code was started by Dr. Bradley Nelson. He's a, he was a craniopath and a chiropractor in Orange County, California, where I grew up. And he... Mm. he ended up after 17 years or so closing down his office because he had too many clients and also because he decided he wanted to teach it to everybody and now he teaches all over the world and he does online classes he so I've actually never actually met him in person and I actually lived right next to where his office was I think I actually ran into him I was a banker at the time so I actually might have met him because I, I went to every single office in that neighborhood and gave my business cards and asked them to do personal banking with me but I don't know if I think I talked to him once before, but anyway. Small, small world. You may have gotten some kind of a vibration. <laughs> from him yeah, but the funny thing is, when I was by his office, is where I f I threw my back out in 1999, and I should have went to his chiropractic office. But at that time, I thought chiropractors were quacks. I don't know. I I didn't really know much about chiropractic at the time. I thought a lot of the people who said they were energy healers were a little off base too, because I grew up Buddhist. And I thought everyone just needed to chant Nam Myoho Rengeki. I, I grew up all my life in the Soko Gakkai, which is a, one of the largest international Buddhist lay organizations. And after about 30-something years of being a Buddhist, I started having all these medical problems. And I c couldn't explain them because I've been into health all my life. I started working out when I was 17. I, I went vegan for a long time. I used to eat all organic food. I used to totally take care of my health in every way possible. I studied herbs, but unexplainably, I started to have all these back problems. I started having itchy skin problems. I started having uh, gas problems, and it's not uh, the gas that you want to be around a person that has. And <laughs> <laughs> I had all these unexplainable good things. Good thing this is only radio, right? Yeah, good thing. That, that was then, and this is now. I don't have any of those problems. So yeah, no. I, I, had to, I had to actually change my uh, understanding of, of people that do metaphysical stuff because as a Buddhist, there's a lot of Buddhists that are actually in, in Buddhism we call it the threefold world which in science and uh, other things they talk about the duality of, of both physical and spiritual but in Buddhism we call it a threefold world and the, the first fold of that world is the appearance of, of life which is the physical manifestation the, the second fold is nature. It's the thinking and the emotions and the, uh, all the different things you feel inside that you can't, you can't explain. And then the third fold is entity, which is, um, it's like a, what's beyond this reality, which is beyond all physical and all spiritual, is, is the true aspect of all reality, which we, we call your enlightened nature from time without beginning which is kind of hard to explain in a short little while, but I do have a video on my uh, YouTube page which is called uh, Buddhist Dialogue with Science. And I'm, I've been reading a lot about science and, and how it relates to Eastern philosophical traditions for many years, and I wrote a lot of articles about that. And I, one of my uh, three books that I published from my writings at Soka University of America was specifically working with what's the difference between the spiritual aspect of reality and the appearance and nature, as, uh, the physical aspect of reality. But it took me a, a whole different, it took me getting really sick and then learning about energy medicine to realize how, how much we are beyond those two dualities. We're actually, we are, um, I, I like to say we're hyper-local and hyper-temporal beings, which means, hyper-local means we're everywhere 
and hypertemporal means we're every when, which means we are infinitely in the past and infinitely in the future, all existing in one in one uh, nanosecond or one how do I say one thought, one reality, which is going on right now. So all of the people that think I'm in Japan and you're in America or wherever you're at, it's not really true because I'm actually you and you are me. As I think it was a. Uh, the song, I am the walrus, I am he as you are he as you are me and we are all together. We are all infinite beings from time without beginning, which I'm starting to fully come to come to awareness with, with overcoming all the, the, the uh, medical problems that doctors couldn't fix. And then now I, I work with clients all over the world and it's just so amazing that in a second I can figure out what's wrong with their body by just doing muscle testing, which is the main part of what the healing modality I use. Ooh, that's what we're going to do. And yeah. by the way, I you know I mentioned a little bit on the uh, on the opening monologue about the confluence of physics and metaphysics. And along with that, uh, it, along with the non-belief of the metaphysical as being uh, you know a part of science and even legitimate science years ago that we've come full cycle on, also the notion of a supreme being or something more. Than, uh, than, than we, if you will, that are out there in terms of uh, this collective unconscious. Yeah. And one of the reasons that the scientists of the past felt that that was not real, there were two major reasons. One is <clears throat> that they could explain everything without that, which is no longer the case. We can no longer explain everything without that. And secondly, that the attributes you know, uh, attributed to the supreme being or a supreme entity, which is probably more like it, um, uh, uh, you know, violated the laws, the known laws of physics. So they, you know, they, it's, the scientists would say, well, you know, how can something exist in this, in the universe, if it's violating the laws of the universe? And th those laws are omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresence. Well, we go ahead and find out now that those are exactly the same attributes that you're talking about, and exactly the same attributes that we are now ascribing to consciousness. So what's kind of interesting is that which we thought couldn't exist is actually the most pervasive thing in the entire universe. And it's exactly as it has the Beatles song, you know, stated. And it's just very interesting that science has now come full cycle on that. Not every scientist is on board with this, but that is the latest thinking, uh, certainly from the latest uh, folks that are involved with uh, theoretical physics. So I just wanted to kind of, you know, uh, compliment you on that notion and also kind of support that with, um, you know, what is, you know, I always call it sem semi-breaking news uh, on the science front. Yeah. So you, I'm sure you're familiar with Professor or Dr. William Tiller, he's the professor emeritus of physics at Stanford University. He's been doing mm -hmm. research on the ability for people to change people's pH level for, on one side of the uh, U.S. by just thinking about the people on the other side. And they, they, they use their pH of their saliva and their blood, and they instantly, these group of people in, in uh, the East Coast, think about changing their pH, either going up, up, half a percent or down a half percent and and they show it right away it, it, if instantly yeah. it this, is instantly right yeah on the, the speed of light uh, reaction exactly yeah so he says the speed of thought is is the speed of light to the eighth power which is the speed of light times the speed of light times the speed of light times the speed you do that eight times and that's beyond anything we can even comprehend in a calculator mm -hmm. so right. yeah so the speed of thought is really the speed of consciousness is beyond anything anyone can put in a computer right. and try to figure out Right. And, and by the way, we're also uh, ascribing that same speed to gravity, which is kind of interesting. Wow. And, uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to do a whole talk uh, from the, you know, on the whole discovery of gravity waves and what that means to all of us and what it doesn't mean to some, what, uh, some of the thoughts we have about, um, about gravity. But that exact same speed has been, um, uh, the, the speed of consciousness has been ascribed to the same speed for gravity. Yeah. And which, by the way, defies Einstein's view that gravity is actually uh, propagated at the speed of light. But we see that that's not at all the case. Yeah, well, science is going to keep... I don't want to digress into a whole... Yeah, science is going to keep, keep morphing and morphing and morphing as our consciousness keeps morphing because we are infinite in our consciousness, and the more our consciousness wakes up, which the Buddha, historical Buddha, the reason they called him Buddha means awakened one, 
and mm -hmm. they said, what are you? Because he, he came out of meditation and he said, they said he was glowing. They said, are you a god? He says, no. They said, are you a demon? No. They said, what are you? He says, I'm awake. So we're just starting to wake up to the infinite potential that our consciousness has. And as we wake up, there's actually, I'm sure you've read the books too, like the uh, Dancing Wooly Masters or the, uh, uh, what was, I forget, there's a bunch of them that talk about how our consciousness is actually changing all of science. So when they look at an experiment, they can no longer really tell what the outcome is going to be, be in, unless they get all the people out of there and there's no way to observe an experiment without people observing it and once people observe it it's going to change the outcome because people's consciousness is going to change the outcome of every experiment exactly first discovered by heisenberg way yeah. back in 1926 yeah 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 no in fact i referenced so many of those books and within my books and they really kind of shaped an awful lot of my thinking cool. it's a terrific book as old as it is, it's a terrific book. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm ready to take callers if we want to take callers or do whatever, because I am I can feel there's people wanting to f see how this really works. Sure. You know, what's interesting, too, you, you know, you were mentioning earlier, Tim, um, and I didn't get quite the connection when you said that the years of being a Buddhist, now you were going through some pain, and that kind of maybe led you to... Uh, maybe chiropractic or whatever it was, and I didn't really get quite the connection between you. Maybe uh, I just missed some of it, but can you okay. just clarify that a little bit? Because I actually have something to add to that. Okay, so I did go to actually after I started having really bad back pain, and I the back the doctor said I needed a back operation. I didn't want to do that. I did go to a chiropractor finally. It did help. I went to acupuncturist for a while. It did help. I went to another energy healer, the only person that really made the problem go away, because the chiropractor, I had to keep going back one, one every month, and for about three weeks, I felt really good, and then after a while, it would go back to normal. So every one of those modalities only did partial work until I went to a, the lady actually did quantum touch, and a few, mm -hmm. a few she did Reiki, she was a Reiki healer, a quantum touch healer, and she did a few other different modalities, but she just put her hands above my body. And she sent this energy into my body and all, all over my body and wasn't even touching me. And I was laying with my face down and on a massage table. And she was, I can feel where her hands were, even though she wasn't touching me. And my whole body would twitch. And that night I went home. Uh, I was in the worst pain I'd ever been in. But the next morning and for the next six months, I didn't have any pain in my back when I had d debilitating pain for so long that the doctor said I needed an operation. So that's when I decided I wanted to be an energy healer, but this lady sp mm -hmm. spoke only Japanese, so I couldn't learn from her. But that's where I went to. The, I went to the U.S. again, and my little brother turned me on to the emotion code and the body code. So the emotion mm -hmm. code and the body code, which is part of the same program um, that I'm certified with the emotion code on, is what I use to completely get over my nasal problems. I had itchy skin problems. I had gas problems. I had back problems. All these different things that the doctors couldn't do anything about. So I used the energy healing, and it just, from, I thought, because I grew up Buddhist, and I thought everyone just needed to chant Nami Hoden Geke, which I do believe if everyone chanted Nami Hoden Geke, the world would be a better place. But now, I don't think that's the only way. I found that energy healing, along with any other spiritual practice that you practice, whether it's chanting Nami Hoden Geke or praying Jesus or whatever you do, it'll just enhance that 20-fold. So that's why I've kind of... I'm a Buddhist and an energy healer all rolled in one, and it's like my two different belief systems now, but it's kind of interrelated. Yeah, interesting. I, um, I have actually had uh, healing from a chiropractor, a distant chiropractor. I mean, at first I went to him like seven miles, six miles away, so it's very, very easy to do. And then after that, I can just... Whoops. position he tells me to get into and it's, it's remarkable the uh, absence of pain in just the same way and the other thing about it that's kind of interesting is that in my own particular case I was a little nervous about sometimes having my neck you know uh, I would sometimes tense up and when he would do those adjustments on my neck that way you didn't have the same feeling but you get the same outcome so it was just uh, almost even better which is which is rather rather remarkable so i have first-hand experience with that and it's you know uh, i just wanted the folks to know out there this is um this is something that is being practiced more and more and um and it works yeah you know, but i think i think you probably
probably need two believers, I'm thinking, Tim, but... No, actually, I've had so many callers into my radio program that said, you know, I'm just calling in because I like you, you're a cool person, I like your music, and I like what you, you do. Because I used to be a really big political activist in California, there's not much political activism in Japan, I would be the only one on the street corner. But, uh, <laughs> so I had a lot of people call into my radio show that didn't really think what I was doing was what they were interested in, but they were interested in talking to me because they like my music and my writings. So they would they would listen in and they would call in and they said you know I'm a skeptic I said I, it doesn't matter you don't have to believe in this because I when I first did it I didn't really believe in it I just was at the point where I I don't want to be in pain anymore and I want to get over this and so I did anything and I tried it and right away my pain goes away and I also tried it on people like my wife who was suffering at the time she was pregnant uh, from debilitating uh, morning sickness and right away within 10 seconds the morning sickness went away so. That was something that even she didn't believe it either. She still today says, no, you didn't do take away any of my pain. But anyway. <laughs> hmm. By the way, uh, one of the callers uh, is getting dropped every time she calls in. Uh, okay. So uh, that's Jesse Jordan. So um, cool. I just got to notice on that. But the studio would probably be more aware of it. Um, and what we'll probably do is just talk right up until the first break, which is really in about three or four minutes. Okay. And then I'll give folks uh, time to... Uh, you know, call in and maybe get some of those uh, queued up, Tim. Okay, good. Uh, but that's interesting. Now, the other thing I just want to be clar just clarify in my own mind, um, these ailments that you were having, the back ailments, the skin ailments, and and uh, maybe the flatulence, if you will, and so forth and so on, um, you didn't attribute that to being a Buddhist. You just were saying that that wasn't helping you necessarily. It was just kind of happenstance. Is that correct? Or is, yeah, what I was saying, thinking? what I was saying, as a Buddhist, I was able to overcome almost everything in my life, like interpersonal relationship problems, sure. uh, financial exactly. problems, but for some reason, no matter how much I chanted, which is what we do as Buddhists, we chant Nam Myoho Gekyo, it didn't help any of the pain, it didn't help any of the itchy skin problems, so I was at a point where I was going crazy because I believe that's, at that time, that's the only thing a person needs to do to overcome anything. And I had to come to a, a point where I, I realized, well, there's something else I need to do, and the doctors didn't know what to do, so that's when I came into energy healing. So I do, I, as a Buddhist, I chant every morning and every evening because I, that's what I, I've done all my life. And I, I, I know it's helping me in every way of my life. It opens up my consciousness and everything. But for certain things like having a back pain, sometimes some meditation or some other uh, spiritual uh, thing will help. But a lot of times you have to go deeper into it, and that's what this body code and emotion code does and other healing modalities I've been using since then. Sure. Now, uh, you we talked about the, um, uh, the, uh, the it's energy code and you have the body code, right? Uh, yeah, emotion code and body code. Emotion code, right, and the body code. Uh, now, are you, were you certified in both or were you just certified no, in the emotion I, code? I only got certified in the motion code. The body code is, a, is the overall program, but I got so good on, on the radio program and I got so many people calling into my show and so many uh, clients that I didn't feel like ever getting certified in any other healing modality. So I, I've actually learned about seven or eight different healing modalities now and I don't have a desire to get certified in any other ones just because I know I know them so well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I can understand that. You know, after a while you feel like uh, you've got it, you know. Yeah. Uh, every once in a while um, I, try to, I try to find out a little bit more about a particular subject and I, I Google something and I find out that I'm the one saying something about it. So I said, okay, well, I guess I got that covered. So <laughs> move on to something, something else. Yeah. But um, we're actually coming up to uh, coming up on our first break, which actually might not be a bad idea to uh, take that in about a minute or so, uh, Tim. And then that way they'll maybe be able to queue up uh, some calls. The first break will take about uh, roughly two and a half minutes, you know, um, just listening to some uh, advertising and uh, but give us a chance to uh, have the studio queue up some of the calls that are uh, coming in. Perfect. And uh, and I think maybe, uh, hold on one second just before I do that, because I think I may have been, um, oh, hold on. Um, yeah, we are, we are taking calls. Uh, we're, going to, uh, we're going to take calls, but first we're going to take a break. And, uh, and then we're going to start taking calls right after that. We do have some calls already uh, queued up. So, folks, uh, <clears throat> please stay tuned, and uh, we'll be right for me. And this was way off the charts. 
uh, people had this, uh, you know, almost, uh, I mean, a few people reported that they thought they were being watched when they weren't, but the people that were being watched, almost all of them reported that they were, so it was very powerful. And um, so basically gets into that whole sense. And there's, and there's nothing within the laws of physics that would let you know you're being watched, you know, unless it is this kind of morphic field. Yeah. So there's a sensation that you're talking about. And in your case, you, you're kind of identifying with people. So we, 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 what's kind of interesting uh, that we've come along to find out is that scientists, you know, want to be able to run experiments to be able to prove things or they're not going to buy into it okay so that's 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 perfectly fine and that's the whole concept of you know scientific principle and uh, and I'm, I'm fully on board with that and and that's why scientists were so I guess reticent and slow to maybe come on board with paranormal you know activity and uh, for two reasons one they didn't really think it was necessary and second of all you know they couldn't really replicate it but what's interesting is we're getting better and better at experiments, and we are replicating these things. And it's kind of really thrown science somewhat on its uh, back on its heels and made believers out of an awful lot of people. And that's one particular case where you talk about morphic fields, and you know, now we're seeing you know evidence of them that we can experimentally show, and we can do this in a, you know we can duplicate these uh, these same findings, you know more and more. And not everybody's on board with this, but you know it's certainly something that you have to. Uh, you know, um, buy into, you know, I, I, in my book, I say, uh, you know, like if you get into Sheldrake's work, you know, it's kind of like, uh, in the vernacular of Ricky Ricardo, you know, um, this, the standard model of physics has some explaining to do, you know, in other words, we, 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 uh, we can't, uh, we can't explain certain things. And so something is obviously is wrong with the model. Yeah. Have you heard of, uh, have you heard of the book, um, the source fields investigations i have not heard that one no okay so the the author and i and i'm getting a a total blank on his name right now but the source fields investigations was his uh most thoroughly researched one his second his next book after that was called the uh synchronicity keys but i can't think of his name now and actually he wrote a book called the reincarnation of edward Ed edgar casey and i do believe he is the reincarnation of edgar casey and i can't think of his name anyway but anyway well, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm very familiar with edgar casey i reference him all over my books kind of interesting guy i was just talking about him uh, this past sunday at a, at a dinner yeah, yeah. Edgar, edgar casey so i'm actually doing starting to do more with uh sleeping healing because i like to sleep and uh I started doing when I was about three or four years old. I started. David Wilcox. Will, David yeah, Wilcox. David Wilcox. Yeah, that's a, such a great book for scientists who don't want to buy in, don't want to buy into things that are, aren't research. He really goes through the research of all this metaphysical stuff. With mostly, most of it was researched after the fall of the Soviet Union with Russian scientists who had the time to do whatever they wanted because they didn't have a anything else to do because the, the the government fell apart so they were they had laboratories they had a little bit of money but they can research things so they started researching pyramids they started researching dreams they started researching all kinds of stuff which other scientists in countries where the government was funding them to do certain research that's all they can do so these scientists had free time to do whatever they wanted and they, they they cared about learning so they started researching all kinds of paranormal stuff and they just the, the research in that book is just absolutely phenomenal and uh, a lot of the scientists that aren't willing to give up their their notions that physical reality is all there is is they're becoming more of a, a religion, which people are calling scientism because they're stuck in this old way of thinking that the only way they can prove anything is if it physically is provable, and physical is only one third of reality, so they're only looking at a small fraction of what is possible, and they're trying to explain it based on a based on mo mo models that are linear models, which lin linear, in the in the synchronicity keys, he talks about time as a, a spiral. And sure. he actually talks about all these people that are reincarnated throughout history, and they wonder why he, historians say Jesus Christ and uh, the guy who, uh, Julius Caesar, there's so many things that in the history of Jesus Christ and the history of Julius Caesar are identical. So either the either the historians were lying and re recreating the history of, of Julius Caesar or they both had the same history 
and he actually found with with about 50 other people in history they went through the same history over and over and they were actually reincarnated and redoing the same thing over and over so yeah yeah Interesting. I, um, I just read a little bit about, about him while i was uh, listening to you uh by the way um jess has stayed on and she okay. has a question cool, cool. uh jess uh, are you still with us i am cool. uh, and i i uh, believe you have a question Yes, um, there is um, a sensation that I'm having, that I've been having, that nobody's been able to tell me what it is or why it is, and I'm not sure if it's related to the sinus infection or not, but I wanted to ask about it. Would that be okay? Yes. Certainly. W did you say again, what was it again? It, it's some sort of sensation when I'm, when I'm working on the computer, which during the, the worst part of the sinus infection I wasn't able to do, but when I'm doing it now, um, it sort of feels like, you know that feeling if you fall falling asleep on a, on a train or in a moving car? It's, it's sort of like that kind of head jerk that happens, but okay. it happens yes. in the side of my head. That, okay. That's the sensation. That's just the best way I can describe it. Okay, and right now are you having that sensation? Or were you having it right now? I just had it. Okay. Yeah, I was just having it. And on it. a level 1 to 10, 10 being the worst, what would you say the discomfort in that sensation? About 7 or 8. Okay. So let me ask if we can do something about that, yeah. The first thing is everything you're not willing to claim on and acknowledge about your ability to, uh, ability to, what's the word? Not relationship, uh, okay, hold on one second, I gotta think of the word. Commune, okay. Everything you're not willing to be now, perceive and receive about your ability to commune with the consciousness of the computers you're working with, would you be willing to destroy and uncreate everything that is times a Buddha zillion? Yeah. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pot and pock, shorts, boys and beyond. Okay, so I'm going again into access consciousness because I know uh, she has a background in access consciousness. Um, the you found, the f yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go mm -hmm. in there, yeah, everything. But uh, your, the founder of access consciousness, Gary Douglas, likes to change the idea of a relationship into communion because relationship is actually defined as the di the distance between two things. So every time we're trying to have a relationship, we're actually causing us to have separation because of the language. And the language means separation. It means the distance between two things. So he says, instead of using the word relationship, use the word communion, which is uh, more of a, uh, not only a Christian idea, but a Buddhist idea. We have, we, we call it the oneness. So we call it funi, which is neither two. So the oneness of you and the computers, everything you haven't been willing to claim on and acknowledge about your ability to be one with all the computers you're using, would you be willing to destroy and uncreate all that times a Buddha zillion? Yeah. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pot and pock, shorts, boys and beyond. Okay, so if she says yes and anyone else who's listening in says yes, you're going to be able to commune with your computers more. So the thing is, science, the people that believe that physical reality is all there is, and there's a group of scientists we call scientism, they're not willing to understand that consciousness is in everything. So the computer has consciousness, our table has consciousness, our chairs have consciousness. So you can actually be sitting on a chair and your butt can be sore and you can ask the chair and the consciousness of your body to work in communion with each other. And all of a sudden, once you ask that, the, the chair will start feeling softer towards your butt because you're actually, the consciousness of the chair will work with you if you ask it to work with you. So let me ask, is there something on the body code chart we should do about this too, yeah? Uh, so far, what I just did right there, did you notice any shift in that sensation? Yeah, and sort of a clearing up and being able to look at the screen a little bit better, too. Cool, okay. There's something else on the body code chart, too, about this, so let's look and find where it is. You know, uh, sorry, go ahead. Go, go, go ahead. No, 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 I just, I, I didn't know if you were through with the... Uh, with the, with the healing process. Just, just one more thing she has. She Okay, so you have cavitation, which cavitation a lot of a lot of dentists don't know about, and uh, it's a uh, anaer anaerobic uh, bacteria that's stuck either in your gums or your tooth or your jaw, or it could be anywhere in your mouth. And this cavitation is kind of hard for dentists to work with, but the good thing is we can energetically release it. So do we need to know where this cavitation is now? Can we release all the cavitation? Yeah, release it all from her gums, jaw, mouth, body, mind, spirit, energy system, wherever else she has cavitation. Is this gone yet? Does she have any other thing like that? No. Okay. So, did your sensation go down a little more? 
Um, I'm not looking at the computer right now, so okay. I'm not sure. Okay. Does that also work with um, the feeling in my ear? In my ears? Yeah, your body uh -huh. says it, like, it's yeah. it's related to the cavitation too. Mm. Let me ask, is there something else with your nose? Okay, we, we were working on your nose at first, and you went down a little bit from there. How has it gone down since then? Oh, tremendously. Tremendously, okay. So, sh okay, they're all related. Your ears, your nose, your, your feeling with the computer, because it's all related. So, it's trapped emotions of anxiety. Do we need something more about it? Do you share more than one, more than a hundred, more than a thousand? These hundreds of trapped emotions of anxiety can release them all at the same time. Yeah, do we need something more? Now, we're just going to release from... Her body, mind, spirit, energy system, and wherever else it might be. Is this all going yet? Does she have anything else like that? No. Any reality. And so far we've had some interesting conversations uh, here on the show tonight. And we've had some healings. Uh, some uh, healings being done by, I guess, Jim Janikos. And the healings are actually being done from uh, from Japan, but it doesn't really matter where you are. In fact, you could be on the moon and, and doing the healings from there. You could be on Mars and doing the healings from there, and it wouldn't really matter, uh, as long as there's some kind of a, uh, a, a connection, which there always is, uh, through this universe. And I've explained that in several other shows. But it's, you know, it's, it's interesting to do this live and, and without seeing the, uh, the patient, but we're discovering it more and more. And it's happening with um, acupuncture, it's happening with chiropractic and, and so forth, and much more so uh, pre prevalent with quantum healing and certainly with energy healing. And so uh, we, we encourage all of you to call in, folks, at 781-325-4569 and tell us if you have uh, some kind of an, uh, an ailment, especially if you have the ailment current at this, at, you know, at this time, and especially if, if it's something that you have had difficulty uh, you know, getting, getting it cured. Uh, and I think just before we took on break, I think we were asking um, the uh, producer of the show, Lucy Diamond, if she had any uh, issues, maybe... Uh, Tim can talk to her about those. Hello, hi Tim. Hello. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. So, if I were a magical ma magician, what would you want to accomplish? A magical magician? I don't even know. So, what's a? Uh, is there any anything? It could be pain. It could be. It could be relationship problems. It could be a. Uh, energy problems, it could be anything that you would want to overcome if I was able to do something beyond your wildest imagination. Oh, if you could unbreak my heart, that would be great. Unbreak your heart. Okay, so everywhere you decided that your heart could be broken, would you be willing to destroy and uncreate everything that is and everything that brings up times a Buddha zillion? See, what's that question? <laughs> So every time I say something that you you can't hear, it means that I I I push the button that you actually need to be pushed. So once again, everywhere you thought or you were implanted or explanted with the belief that you could have your heart broken, would you be willing to destroy and uncreate it all? Times a Buddha zillion. Okay, yeah. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pot and pock, shorts, boys and beyond. So talking of heart, we were talking about the brain. The Heart Math Institute says the heart is actually a lot more has a lot more memory than the brain actually does and uh, the heart is actually measured they can measure the energy of the heart waves uh, from a closed off room to another room the, it, the, the person's heart energy will be actually be registered in the other person's body that's in another room if they're thinking about them so your heart is the, the most amazing organ of the body and actually we don't even know really uh, enough about the heart. We're learning more and more in science and, and, and energy healing and everyone's learning the heart. But in, in, in Chinese the the character for heart is actually, and the character for brain both uses part of the same uh, symbols because they believe the brain and the heart are actually inseparable uh, organs. So the good thing is you as an infinite being uh, can never have your heart broken. This idea of having your heart broken is just an implanted belief that uh, is implanted in you to make you think that you're a limited being and you could be in any way hurt or destroyed. So everywhere you're not willing to claim on and acknowledge that you are an infinite being from time without beginning and there's nothing that ever can hurt or destroy your infiniteness, would you be willing to destroy and uncreate everything that is and everything that brings up times a Buddha zillion? Yeah, 
Yes. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, fun and fuck, shorts, boys and girls. I should have asked you, how was your heart feeling before before I, on a level one to ten, ten being like totally heartbroken and one being not at anything at all, before I, I started saying all this crazy stuff? I'll go to seven. Seven, okay, so have you noticed any lightness around your heart area now? No. No, okay, that's fine. So you have a heart wall. So a heart wall is one of the main things that the body, uh, the emotion code and the body code does. It's a bunch of trapped emotions trapped around your heart because your heart wants to think it's protecting you by putting this wall around it. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't allow good and bad energy to come in or out and it blocks off a lot of the radiance of the heart. So can I release a trapped emotion from her heart wall? Yeah. Okay, it's anxiety. Do we need to anything more about it? No, does she have more than one, more than a hundred, more than a thousand? These hundreds of trapped emotions of anxiety, can I release them all at the same time? Yeah, do I need to know anything more? Can I release all these from her body, mind, spirit, energy system, and heart wall, and anywhere else they might be? Are these all going? Yeah, does she have any? No, she still have a heart wall, yeah. She has a psychic trauma. Two emotions, three emotions. Crying and confusion. So about five or six years ago, this, this psychic trauma of crying and confusion got trapped in your body, your body believes, about five or six years ago. Does, does that bring anything to your mind at all? Yep. Yes, okay. Good. So this, do we need to know anything more about it? No. Can we just release the psychic trauma? Yeah. So psychic trauma is anytime you have two or three emotions or more trapped at the same time in your body. It's usually an overwhelming experience. So releasing all this psychic trauma and any other psychic trauma she has in her body, mind, spirit, energy system, or heart wall. Is this all gone? Yeah. Anything else affect No. You probably have more layers to the heart wall, but did you notice any shift in your feeling of uh, heartbreak? Um, no. No? Um, but it's, it's interesting that, you know, you would have gotten a year correct. Yeah. So the cool thing is, yeah, the information stored in your body and it's, it's easily recallable. Like if I was doing hypnosis, you can, we can go back to past lives and, but, uh, I actually do work with past lives. So there is issue with actually past life. Would you like me to work on your past life a little? That would be interesting. Sure. Okay. So, so your body thinks you were a male in your past life. Whether that's true or not, it doesn't really matter because you're in your in your energy body you can have actually other people's information stored, like a parent's information. So it could be we're picking up on your dad or your someone else's past life. It doesn't really matter whether it's you or not. But anyway, it's stored in your body, so if we work on it it releases whatever that memory is and you don't have to make it your reality. So your body thinks this, whoever this person was five or six years ago that caused you to have this psychic trauma of crying and confusion, it was because of the relationship you had when you were a male in another lifetime with that person. So it's called courting and we can release all this courting that you guys share through all time, space, dimensions and realities. So it, you, whoops, someone's breathing real loud. Okay. So, releasing all this courting she had with this person from all lifetimes, past and in the future, because time is actually cyclical, which we can get into if you want to, but anyway, uh, releasing it all from her body, mind, spirit, energy system, is this all gone yet? Yeah. Anything else we need to do about that? No. Has your feeling of seven gone down a little? Um, I'm not so sure. No. Okay, okay. You, you might you might notice tomorrow or you might notice after because a lot of times what we do is so subconscious that it's hard to consciously be aware of what's going on and then days later you might just all of a sudden start feeling happy and then people around you go, what have you done? And you're like, I don't know, I'm the same person. But a lot of times you don't notice but other people do. So that's cool. Is there something else? No, we shouldn't do anything more on it. Your body says that's all for now. Wonderful. Well, we're in touch, so at least I'll be able to get back to you. Yeah, you know. definitely. <gasps> Do we have a new caller on the line, uh, Lucy? <clears throat> um, I don't know. Is there a caller? Is, I, I noticed the phone went off and then back on, I thought. Uh, Three two five four five six nine. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Yeah. Um, 
But it is kind of interesting uh, that you uh, you kind of nailed the time frame, you know, yeah. uh, on that with Lucy. I, I have uh, client I have clients that uh, they give me three or four things to work on in a session, and most of my clients I do proxy session, which means I work on them while they're sleeping, and I send them an MP3 file because that's most of my clients are in another country, and I my sleep time is their awake time, so. Uh, <coughs> I can't always work on them while they're awake, and I don't have time to call them all and talk to them on Skype. So they give me two or three issues, and then I work on them, and their body says there's all these other issues. <clears throat> and they said, well, I completely forgot about it. Yes, I do have that issue. I am addicted to chocolate. And uh, all of a sudden, their body says all these things that they didn't tell me about. And they're like, how did you know that? How did you know that? How did you know that? And so, yeah, everything's there. It'll come up if it needs to come up. Interesting. Now, Tim, I noticed you uh, you know, hesitating and then and then answering a question. Are you looking? Is there some kind of a manual that you basically re referencing when you, yes. uh, when you're working on this? Yes. Yes, I'm using the body code mind map, which is a hyperlinked text that uh, has thousands and thousands of pages. So I, I look at one page, and then I look at what. When I first started, I would ask, is it on the right side of the page or the left side of the page? And I would get a yes or a no with muscle testing. Then I would say okay is it an odd row or even row and I would I would narrow it down it would take a long time but recently my body says not to do that anymore just to go with exactly what it comes to my mind so when I look at the page it's kinda like for me my eye goes right to the one that it is it kinda like lights up and then I just click on that one and it opens a new page and then I look at that page for a moment and my body just tells me what which one of the many things on that page and I click on that and it goes to a new page so each time I have to click on a page it gives me new awareness. When did this start? October uh, last year. Oh my goodness! So that's a long time to have a sinus issue. I've, so I tried everything, all oh. oregano, and 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 tea tree oil up my nose, and eucalyptus, and you know some active consciousness energy work, and I just short of pulling my own face off. <laughs> Uh, well, that sounds like a tough case, Tim. Yeah, well, that's what I'm here for. So yeah. the the cool thing is Jesse Jordan is also a singer songwriter like I am, and uh, I first heard I first heard about Jesse Jordan because she was calling into a Access Consciousness call with who I consider my mentor of Access Consciousness, which was Rika Zimmerman, who didn't who left Access Consciousness. So. It's actually a good segue because I didn't talk about access consciousness, and I'm going to start with access consciousness. Um, I'm also no, not a certified access consciousness facilitator. I call myself a decertified, quasi-certified, uh, pre-certified <laughs> access consciousness facilitator from time without beginning because I, I are, are self-certified. So uh, anyway, Jesse Jordan. Uh, can actually say yes for everyone on the line. The good thing with access and many of the healing modalities I use is that everyone on the line, whether they're listening in or they're listening into some replay or they're listening in subconsciously from some, they're asleep in another country, who knows? A lot of people are listening in and they don't even know they're listening in. But uh, everyone will get healing if they say yes to this question. So I'm going to start off with this question. So Jesse, you're going to say yes for everybody. Um, all the expectations, projections, judgments, conclusions, computations that you have and everyone else has about what is possible for you with this sinus infection and everything that's not possible on this call, would you be willing to destroy and uncreate at all times a Buddha zillion? Yes. Yeah. Yes, right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pot and pock, shorts, boys and beyonds. Okay, what I said was, seems like uh, Swahili, but anyway. If you guys go to my uh, YouTube page, there's an hour video explaining what that is. That's the Access Consciousness Clearing Statement. And I, the person that I have doing it is the lady that I said left to Access Consciousness, which her name is uh, Rika Zimmerman. So you guys can go to my YouTube page and watch that and know what I said. But the good thing is your subconscious mind knows everything there ever is that's known. So whether you know what I'm saying, you actually do on a subconscious level know what I'm saying. So you guys are all tuning in because of that. So Jesse, what I'm going to use first is the, the uh, body code. Um, this, my name is Jesse. What I'm doing for people who never worked with me before, I'm muscle testing. I'm doing a, there's many muscle testing techniques. I'm using a falling log method, and my body's saying, yes, it's strong. I'm, I'm Jesse Jordan. If I say, my name is Tim, it all of a sudden becomes weak. That means I'm picking up her energy and not my energy. So that's how we start off. 
And this body code chart has thousands of pages. I don't even know how many pages, but we just look at the first page and we ask. Her body says the first thing is pathogens. So I looked right at the pathogens and it mold. So um, does she no? Can I download it for her? Okay, this is the another cool thing. I've had many healing uh, practitioners from all different modalities come on my radio show and do live healings with the callers. And at that moment, I was able to pick up exactly what they were doing and duplicate it. So what what they did on one of the calls is downloaded from the matrix field exactly what the person needed. Because her, her body's saying mold, the best thing that would normally cure mold is uh, neem, neem tree leaf. And I'm just downloading it from the matrix field into her body, mind, spirit, energy system. And anyone else on the caller who has mold or has fungal infection or anything like that, I'm downloading it in your body if you need it. So if you're open to it, just say yes and allow me to download this into your body. Yeah. Okay. Did you say mold? Yeah. I've been concerned about mold lately. Yeah. Okay, so is the mold gone? Yeah. Is there any other? No. Okay. So is there something else that's contributing to this? Yeah. <coughs> Sinus infection. <coughs> okay. So a lot of times when I'm working on the caller, whatever they're going through, I'll start having symptoms of it while I'm working on them. So it's, I feel like I'm getting the, <coughs> my throat's are clogging up. Okay, there's more toxins. It's food in my ears too, in my okay. little ear. You have some microbial toxicity. So you have parasites, are they physical? No. So energetic parasites are what they are, which the, the, the thing is, I actually had parasites, which was one of the main things that were causing my back pain, I believe. But I also my skin irritation problems and my nasal problems. But the parasites that I had, there's all different types of parasites. And a lot of people that work with parasites, they have to do all these different tests and figure out which ones that they're working on. But then I figured out there's a whole other group of parasites which are called energetic parasites. They're basically entities without a body. So they, they are parasites in your body like entities, but they are they don't have they haven't embodied in a physical body so they don't have anything that a, a doctor can see in a microscope or anything else so they're disembodied entities so can I release all these parasites yeah do I need to know anything more they're releasing all these from her body mind spirit energy system and wherever else they might be um, for people that can't see me I'm gonna make a video and put it up on YouTube I'm, I'm, I'm recording this on a camera so you can see what I do but I was rubbing my hands over my head Dr. Bradley Nelson used to use magnets I think he still does but uh, I used them for about a week and my body said stop it so I stopped it and I just used my hands and rubbing your hands over your head what it does is there's starting from the lip going over the head down the spine and all the way around at the stomach again is is what's called the uh, acupuncture meridian which is called the governing meridian which it governs all the other meridians in the body which are rivers of energy and so just sending the intention down that governing meridian with rubbing my hands over my head just sends it through my body and my body is her body right now because we are, I'm working as proxy for her. So is this all gone yet? So uh, I should have asked you on a level one to ten. Uh, on a level of one to ten, when you first called in, Jesse, what was the level you f of discomfort in that area you had? Um, pretty much like I was maybe a seven. Okay. It's kind of a lot of time feeling. Um, okay. And did you feel so any? Seven. Did you feel any shift in the last two things I just did? Yeah, I can. My, I feel like my passages open up and I can breathe a little better. Good. Okay. So my name is Jesse. Is there something? Okay. No. Right, right now, your body's saying that's that's all I should do now because there's other callers. So, just let me know on Facebook. I know we've talked a couple times before and. Call into my radio show anytime. I'm going to take off this Wednesday. Usually I do Wednesday show, but because I'm doing today's show, I'm not going to do Wednesday. But if you call on Sunday, I'll be doing it. It's 9 a.m. No, it's 10 a.m. now. 10 a.m. Sunday morning for people in New York and people on the West Coast. It's uh, 8, uh, 8 a.m. No, 7 a.m. Yeah. And Tim, what, what time is it where you are right now? Right now it is uh, 8.45 in the morning. On Thursday, uh, what, what am I on Wednesday morning? Thursday. Yeah, Wednesday morning, right, right. Yeah. Okay, very good. And Jesse, uh, you could also maybe call in at the very, very end of the show and just uh, give us an update. Um, see if you're more like a, a two or a three by that time. 
Okay. And uh, just let us know. Thank but thank you, you very much awesome. for calling, and uh, and we hope this helps. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Bye bye. Yep. Yeah. We have another caller. Cool. Uh, when we cue the next caller in the uh, uh, studio, we'll just cue the next caller that you have uh, set up here. Okay. Um, I see. I see. We have two callers on there. Um, Lucy, which one do you want us to take first? Willow, are you with us? Okay, the caller from the seven three two. Seven three uh, seven three two or seven three five. Seven three two, Willow. Yeah, seven three two. Yeah, seven three two, uh, Willow, uh, caller. Um, are you uh, live with us? Yes, thank you. Yes. Well, let, let us know your name and um, and tell us what your ailment is. Or any a little back little background on it. Um, my name is Stacy, and Stacey. actually, um, it comes and goes, but I get like pins and needles in my left thumb. And it kind of goes up to my wrist. Um, I have had it checked out. Nobody seems to know. They, they say it's nothing, like it's not corporal tunnel. It's nothing, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Now, have you actually gone to uh, a physician while you were having the problem? Or did, when you got there, did you not have the problem when you got there? And, you know, in other words, was it one of those kinds of things that you go there while it was present with you? Yeah, unfortunately, as I go, like I said, it comes and goes. Right. And of course, when I went, they, you know, I couldn't see it. Didn't wasn't doing it, and yeah. the doctor couldn't feel it, and he was trying to push on things, and it didn't trigger it. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another tough one, Tim. No, that's perfect. The good thing is with Stacy, it doesn't belong to her. So Stacy, everything you're picking, you're picking up from other people, and everyone on the call listening in. If you can just say yes to the, whatever Stacy says yes to, it's going to clear whatever's you're worried with. Because 80, 90 percent of the things you you feel is actually just an awareness of other people's problems. So that's why they can't find a problem because it's not yours. So everything you're biomimetically mimicking about other people's bodies and you're manifesting it as a thumb issue, would you be willing to send it back with full awareness? Yes. Okay. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pot and pox, shorts, poison beyond. Is this all gone? I should have asked you, on level 1 to 10, what was your discomfort in the thumb when you first called in? It wasn't happening when I first called in, but normally it, it does bother me. I would say probably a 6 or a 7. Okay. So right now it's not bothering you? No. Okay. So what you're going to have to do, <coughs> every time it happens, because your body's saying it doesn't belong to you, is say, everything, this, everything I'm picking up from someone else, I send it back with full awareness. So what our, the reason our head is on top of our body is it's like a cell phone tower. It's there to actually receive information from other people and other things. So we're constantly uploading and downloading information with our head. And so 80 to 90 percent of your thoughts, feelings, and emotions don't belong to you. So if you start feeling when you wake up in the morning that like you feel like you're tired, you, you'll ask yourself, does this belong to me? And usually your body will send it back because it doesn't belong to you. One of the things, and, uh, and I'm very impressed. Thank you, Joseph. So, uh, I really enjoyed yeah. the call. Yeah, well, I have as well. And uh, we'll have you back on the show again soon. And thank you again for being on. And folks, thank you for listening to another edition of Ordain Your Reality. And if you're here in the United States, I hope the candidate of your choice does well tonight. And... Uh, if you're outside the United States, well, maybe you, maybe you have a vested interest as well. <laughs> so, uh, and again, this is just a preliminary, but it's really a, a very big voting day to gain, uh, you know, uh, a lot of access to uh, the and, presidential. And campaign. I'm a California citizen, and I didn't get my absentee ballot this time, but I am sending in my energetic vote for the... Yeah. Uh, you say you were from Orange County? Because I, yeah. I was actually just in Orange County two weeks ago. Yeah, Huntington uh, Beach with, most of my life. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. My son lived there a number of years ago. Yeah, I was nearby there. Very good. Cool. Well, excellent. Well, Tim, uh, well, thank you very much for being on the show and gracing us with your uh, with your presence and your background and and, um, and of course, obviously the uh, the healings that you did. Thank you. And so, folks, uh, that's a wrap. And tune in again next week. And again, it's Eastern St Eastern Daylight Savings Time here, and it uh, starts at seven o'clock. 
So please tune in and adjust your time accordingly. Right now it's 8.35 p.m. my time. So God bless and stay well. You're clear, Joe. Good. I like that applause in the end. That's good. That's good. Uh, good little addition. Yeah, I'm having some fun. That's all. Um, yeah, that's yeah. good. So Tim, you want to come back? Yeah, you definitely. That yeah. was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You do. You're an excellent, uh, excellent guest. Cool. You get a good speaking voice, and you did a great job. Thank you, yeah, guys. Yeah, you still be. Uh, you handled the callers really good. So um, we could definitely do this again. Perfect. Yeah. Let me know. I'll be there. Okay. okay. Well, we'll advertise it a lot, and we'll stay in touch. Okay. Thank you, guys. Have a good. You know, we're Facebook friends, so we'll keep 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 you know uh, in contact that way as well. Cool. And for both of you, and for everyone else, uh, if you can drink more water today, because everything I did clearing on you, the more water you have, the more it will clear out quicker. That's the next thing I'm gonna do. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. See you. <laughs> Huh. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> Thank you.